If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Nehemiah 4. Uh, we got a quite, quite a few scriptures this morning, but please just stay with me. Uh, I promise we'll get to our point. Nehemiah 4, verses 10 through 23. If you don't have uh, your Bible, it'll be on the screen. Uh, and it's also written down in the bulletin if you want to go home and study these. Nehemiah 4, verses 10 through 23. It says, And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burden is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries say, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times from all places where it's Ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore set I and the Lord placed behind the walls, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with the swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brother, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your house. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their <coughs> counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that they had of my service walked in the work, and the other half of them being held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the rulers were behind all the houses of Judah. They which built on the wall, and they they, that bear burdens, and those that laid it, every one of them, uh, of his hands walked and worked, and with the other hands held a weapon. For the builders, every one, had his sword guided by his side, and so he built. And he that sounded the trumpet was with by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one from far from another. In what place? Therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, restore ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lounge with Jerusalem, that is the, that is the night they shall be guarded to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brother, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, None of us put off our clothes, saying that every one put them off for washing. This morning we continue our series, Can't Stop and Won't Stop. Dear week one, God showed us that we cannot allow our condition, our past, the world, or ourselves to stop us from coming to Jesus. Then last week God showed us that if we want the victory, we have to march at least one more time, even if it seems crazy. I love it because I, I, I heard it, I, I thank God, I even heard it when people were walking out the door last week. Some people couldn't even walk up the steps, but they walked down the steps because they said, one more time, I'm going to do it one more time. And we come to find out that even if it sounds like we're crazy, even if it sounds like we marched around the wall six times, that we're going to do it at least one more time. And then after that one more time, we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again, because we realize that if we do what God has called us to do, and we don't stop, that God will provide the victory. Amen? Amen. Now, I know some of your families are here, and you, they think you're quiet, but I know you're not quiet. Amen. amen. So you can say amen a little louder if you want to. But I thank God for what he's showing us, that we can't stop and that we won't stop. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. And, and I want us to really uh, 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 understand what God is trying to tell us as I begin to study God wrote this sermon to me, and it says, we can't stop and we won't stop fighting for one another. <coughs> you see, as a family, I see that we're quitting on our families a lot of times. We're quitting on our communities. We're quitting on the United States of America. We're quitting on all these things in our lives. It is sad that divorce rate is higher than people getting married these days. It is sad that we have families that are leaving their kids here, there, and everywhere and allowing the TV to show them how to live instead of being the example that God has called them to be. Amen. It is sad that we have teachers that don't even want to teach anymore. They just want to get there and get a paycheck and not let people know who God is. It is sad that we have preachers that don't care about their communities anymore, don't care about the families that are around them. All they care about is a title or a power. But church, I want to you know, we've got to fight for one another. Amen. We're all family. Amen. We're part of the body of Christ. Amen. I love it. I have a 
class, Sunday school class, when I was young, Sister, Sister Marilyn's class, when I was young. I remember sitting in those classes. Actually, I sat in Sister Marilyn's class even when I wasn't supposed to be sitting in Sister Marilyn's class. She had the babies, and I was like 13. Well, she had like seven, eight, nine year olds, and I was like 13 and 14, and I wouldn't want to leave her class. And I wanted to be in that class all the time. Some of you helped raise me. Some of you helped show me, be an example. And church, it is time that we get back to the point where people come to the church and realize that there are people that are on their side and not against them. It is sad when people are scared to go to church because they're worried about what everybody else is going to say about them. Amen. It is sad that we're worried about what we wear to church because we're worried that somebody's going to talk about us. Amen. Or, or, or what our job is, or, or, or how we look, or, or if we have tattoos, or if we have earrings, or if we, or we wear wedding bands, or different, th different things. Listen, church, we can take that so far out of hand that we can turn people away instead of showing them the love of Christ. I don't care what your past is, amen. I'm telling you that all the time, and I want to let you know that. I want to let you, I don't care what you've done before you came in the door. I just thank God that you're here, amen. I thank God that you come to the house of God. I want you to come in and not feel comfortable, but I want you to feel loved. I want you to feel the presence of God. I don't want you to feel judged. I don't want you to feel that I'm better than you are because I'm just a sinner just like every single one of you. But the God, by God's grace, I have been saved. I have been sanctified. I have been filled with the Holy Ghost. And just because he did it for me, he'll do it for each and every one of you. Stop worrying about the rest of this junk. Amen. I'm, I know that ain't theological saying junk. But listen, we worry too much about the other junk than we worry about the presence of God. We worry about, amen, all this other stuff. Instead of worrying about God saving people. Listen, God called me to help guide you to Christ. He didn't call me to tell you how bad you are and what you shouldn't do, what you should do. God called me to show you in the Bible where you should go and how you should do this and how you should do that. Not because I say so, but because God says so. That's what fighting for one another is. And church, we've got to get back to a point that we're willing to fight for one another. That we're willing to go out and do the extra mile. You see, we live in a society that believes watching out for themselves and nothing else. As a matter of fact, most people would rather fight with their family and neighbors or others than fight for them. Some people can't even get together for Thanksgiving because they have an enemy in their own family. Amen. If they're here, please don't look at them. Just start praying. <laughs> Amen. And Nehemiah 4 and 14 tells us that the enemy is real. And he is not, he is after not only you and me, but our homes and the rest of the world. So my question for you today is going to be, are you going to keep fighting for others? Nehemiah 4 can help us answer this. You see, Nehemiah 4, they were halfway building the wall. They were halfway done. But now the people became tired and the enemy is planning a surprise attack. And then in verse 12, we see some of the people that heard about this plan. They come to the brothers with serious warning. As a matter of fact, this is the perfect time for the enemy to come against them in a united attack because the workers are tired. There, there's a lot of rubble still to be dealt with. And now the people who live near the enemy are bringing discouraging news about the attack. So the people now feel like quitting. Some of you here today feel like quitting. Some of you here today just feel like, I can't do enough. Some of you here today feel like this world has just took you down and took you out. But I'm here to tell you this morning, don't stop. Don't stop. I think about it, man, and, and I love those, um, those very intelligent books that I read my son sometimes. There was one about a little engine. <laughs> And he saw this big hill, amen. And he began to... <coughs> I love just making that noise, amen. <laughs> he began to say, choo-choo. Uh, and as he started up the hill, the hill kept getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And you know what? I love because his chugga, chugga, chugga started becoming, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Listen, I know it's 
weird and different, but just go with me. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. See, a lot of us are going up the hill and we don't think we can, so we stop and we begin to fall backwards. And a lot of times, God has called us to a higher place, and we don't realize the hill is almost done, it's almost over. We're almost over the side of it. But we get to the top, and we get as close as we can, and we don't see no end, and we begin to stop, and we begin to quit, and we begin to fall because we're tired, we're discouraged, and, and we have all these things going on in our life. And so we forget about God, and we start thinking about ourselves, and then we never make it up the mountain, and we stay in a valley. And church, I want to let you know, the valley is not where you're supposed to live. You're supposed to live on the mountaintop. He says, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, you got to go through it. And he didn't ever say you wouldn't go through it. He said, you got to keep moving. you got to keep going through. And when you get through it, there's something greater on the other side. He said, joy comes in the morning. Amen. That means you have to go through night to get to the morning, to get to the joy. Some of you here today, I felt like quitting. And there's reasons why you felt like qu quitting. You see, the first lesson that I learned in this text is we can't give in to fatigue, fear, or discouragement. You see, church, some of you already know that being a Christian can sometimes lead to being tired and having fear and being discouraged. But God tells us not to give up. The first thing we can't give in to is fatigue. Some of us are so burdened down and so tired of fighting the good fight that we want to give up. Some of us have been praying for years and years and years and we want to give up because we never, we don't think it's ever coming. We don't think our, our joy is ever coming. And it's not, listen, the Bible doesn't say that you won't get tired, but I love what the scripture says. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, Jesus said this, come to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. He says, listen, I never said you wouldn't be tired, but I did say when you become tired, come to me. I, I love talking, I love our seniors here at Restoration Chapel. Amen. Sometimes I know you get felt like you left out. We all trying to do this youth movement. Amen. They playing those young songs. Amen. And doing this, they do that pastor up there, he wear blue jeans, man. <laughs> to be wearing a suit and tie. Wish you wear a bow tie once in a while. <laughs> I know you feel like, oh, listen, I love you seniors because a lot of you seniors have fought the good fight. And even though you're tired, you're still praying and seeking God. You're still seeking after his face. You still want to see a move of God like you've never seen before. You've seen good times. You've seen bad times. I love it. We was talking to some this morning and said, I can't believe my family's here or my family's coming or my family's doing this. I can't believe we've seen the church go from 10, 12 years ago only having 12 people to now averaging 104. I can't believe that we've seen this and we've seen that. I can't believe that now we don't just have the church. We have the children's house. We have the community center. God never should have gave us any of this, but we saw even though we're tired, even though we've cleaned a lot of floors, even though we prayed a lot of prayers, even though we met at people's houses and knocked on people's doors, even though I went up and told everybody I could about God, I'm tired, but I realized that if I put myself on Jesus, he will give me rest. He'll give me rest. Some of you here today, because you're your mom, your dad, your grandparent, your grandma have been praying for you constantly. Constantly. And I love it because when I have Tuesday morning prayer service with these with some of these seniors, they tell about how somebody got saved this week, or how somebody uh, started coming to church, or how somebody uh, uh, did this and somebody did that. And they're so excited, they're smiling, they're crying. And, it, and they said, I never thought it was going to happen. It took 30, 40, 50 years for it to happen. But God has saved and God has blessed because I did not give don't let fatigue stop you. Don't let us, listen, I love it, man. We, we went shopping Friday, not with those crazy people that, if it's one of you, I'm sorry. Not with those people that, that shopped that morning because I'm getting my rest, amen. We went shopping at 6 o'clock Friday night. And you know what? They steal some people. Man, I've been up since 2 o'clock this morning. 
they were going to shop until they dropped. <laughs> they were tired, but they had a vision. They had a purpose. They had a passion for some TV that they get on sale next week. <clears throat> they had a passion and a purpose. When you allow Jesus to be your passion and your purpose, you'll fight through time. You keep doing the church, but he don't, set, he don't just stop there. He says this in Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Church, allow God to renew your strength. But after we get past the fatigue, we also cannot give up. Give up on fear. So many of us give up because of fear. Fear of what people will say. Fear of what people will do. Or fear of what God will do when we mess up. Pastor Jeff preached a couple weeks ago on the 12 spies in the book of Numbers. You see, the Jewish people came to Moses and they said, wait a minute. Let us scout out the land before we, before we enter in. So they took, selected 12 spies and they went in. And when they came out, they had a big thing of grapes. And they were so excited, but they were also so scared. Because they said giants live there. You know what? Some of you are looking at the giants instead of looking at the promise. You see, God had already told them that they were going to take over the land. That they were going to have the land. But you know what? They started looking at the giants and they began to say, Yeah, God said that, but there's going to have to be work involved. I'm scared of those giants. They're bigger than us. They're stronger than us. But church, do you realize if God has promised it, it will happen. Amen. They begin to get scared, but then there was some. There was one that said, Listen, we're going to fight because God has already given it to us. You see, God has already promised the promised land. And if God promises it, it will happen. Church, God has already given us some promises. Too, and we cannot allow fear to stop us from receiving those promises. But then some of us pass fatigue. Some of us pass fear. But then there's discouragement. Have you ever noticed when everything's going good, somebody's going to bring you a discouraging remark? Anyway, I love hearing people talk. Anyway. You know, for a while, I thought everybody liked me, Brother Mike. Then I realized not everybody liked me, especially when I'm happy. Somebody's going to try to break me down. Somebody's going to try to tell me to knock me down. Amen. I, I, I get so excited when things happen. I get happy about it. Listen, I, I, I was asked to, for our family reunion to do a turkey. Amen. And, and I called somebody and got them to do a turkey for me because I can't cook. <laughs> but then they brought it to me last night. And I realized oh, i got to fix this turkey or it's going to go dry. So my wife, amen, I'm so excited I have a wife. Uh, she cut the turkey up right? and, and did what she needed to do with it. And I was so excited. And, and then I went in there and I said, why'd you do it like that? <laughs> I couldn't realize I wasn't very encouraging at that prompt. She already did the work. And I walked in and I discouraged her. And then it hit me. I'm discouraging her. You know what, church? It's just like that in your walk with God. You'll be walking with God and everything's going right. And somebody will come to you and say something and knock you right back down. Make you feel just like you used to be. Church, you know what? We got to get past the discouragement. We gotta, listen, and there's people that say this church will never make it. And I look at them and laugh at their face. Because I say this church is about to bust out the doors. We're about to bust out the windows. We're about to take land. We're about to build. Because I believe God's got something greater in store for each and every one of us. Not because of who I am. Not because of who you are. Not because of your Sunday school teacher, not because of your uh, Sunday school superintendent and worship man. This church is going to take over because God is the encourager and I follow him and he's already made a promise that we will prevail, church, as long as we put him first in everything that we do. So when you come to discourage me, I'm going to tell you, you better turn that discouragement into encouragement. Amen. Amen. Don't you come and tell me something's wrong. I'm going to tell you to fix it. <laughs> Don't come and tell me the bathroom's without toilet paper. You better go get some. <laughs> you the one that's got the problem. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to tell you, it's kind of funny that people come to you in the times that you feel most encouraged to try to discourage you. 
I try to knock you down. I love what the scripture says in Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy 21 through 9. It says, When thou goest into the battle against thy enemies and see horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye come nigh into the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say against your enemies, Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for your, you against your enemies, to save you. And the office shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that have built a new house and have not dedicated? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicated. And what man is he that have planted a vineyard and have not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return turn his house, lest he die in a battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath been thrown a wife and have not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man take her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house lest his brother heart faint as well as his heart heart. And it shall be when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people that they shall make captains of the army to lead the people. You read that scripture and you come to find out that it seems like everything that you do is really good, but somebody's going to come along and try to knock you down. And the Bible says when they do, tell them to go ahead. Because God still got me. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. Keep your eyes on God. And he will show you the encouragement that you need. As I begin reading, though, after we find out these things that try to keep us to stop, I want to show you real quick what Nehemiah does to help fight for each other. And I want us to do this this morning. First thing he did is he united under the right leadership. You see, these people went to Nehemiah because they knew he was a man of God. And we must unite under God's leadership to do the work that God has called us to do. Luke 11 and 17 says this, But he knoweth their thoughts, said unto him, Every kingdom divided itself, it, it brought to desolate, and a house divided against the house fallen. You see, church, when they begin to, to put fear and when we begin to get tired and we begin to be discouraged, you know what, Brother G, I love it because you know what Nehemiah says? Nehemiah says we've got to get under the right leadership. And the right leadership is God. But the thing about it is we've got to unite together. Amen? We've got to unite together. Amen. It's like a secret. You know how you need to start the battle? First, get some people on your side. Find the right leader. Why not find the creator, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the great I am, the one that slayed everything already, the one that's already provided the victory. Go up under him and unite together. Put away your differences and unite with him. Just because you're Hispanic, just because you're black, just because you're white, that's just the thing, amen? Your blood is red, so unite together because Jesus Christ came to save every single soul on this earth. Just because you're poor, just because you're rich, just because you're, you're, you're chunky, just because you're skinny, unite together. Because church, uh, when we're divided, we will fall. But united together under the right leadership of God, we will march on. Amen. But that's not it. Because after we unite together, we got to do something. After we unite together, then we must serve. Amen. You see, a lot of us want to unite together, but a lot of us don't want to put the work in it. You see, so many of us stop serving as soon as times get rough. But remember this, if I serve, then I'm in a position to fight for others and for others to fight for me. But when I stop, I put myself in a, in a vulnerable position by being, away, by being away from the others. After we unite, after we start serving, then we must put people in the right places at the right time. I love what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah placed families at the lowest point. You see, he knew that at the lowest point, we become vulnerable. When's the last time you stood up for somebody that was going through a hard time? Amen. Listen, I love Brother T to death. And, and, and 
uh, I, I'm united together with him. And I know we serve together. Amen. I know we're going to do great works for God. But when he's down, guess what? I need to be there for him. At his lowest spot, I need to be there for him. And listen, I love it because there was a minister. I know a lot of you heard about the bus uh, accident in Chattanooga. And there was a minister that went to the hospitals and he said, listen, I don't have the answers. But at least I can be here to listen. Sometimes we got to take away the pride and realize we don't have all the answers. But when my brother's down, I can stand beside him. <coughs> Because when he lets his guard down, I need to be there for him, amen? When he puts his word of God down, I need to be there for him, amen? I need to, listen, some of you family members, you need to be there for the rest of your family. Don't just meet three times a year. Be there for them when they're down and when they're out and when they're going through hard times. Call them. Let them know that you're there for them. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that they can talk to you. Let them know that you're there to comfort them. And church, when we begin to do that, we begin to unite together more. We begin to see God move more than he's ever moved before. Move like he's never moved before. The Bible tells me when I'm tired, when I let my guard down, when I'm alone, I will give up. That is why we must have people in the right place at the right time. After we have the people in the right place at the right time, next we must be always be alert and always have the word. I love it. They said even the builders had a sword. Do you know God gave you this book to be your weapon against the enemy? You don't have an excuse to walk around like you don't know what's going on. When I was playing football one time, I, I thought I was bad and all that. And I ran the wrong way. <laughs> and I was an office alignment, so I thought, hey, man, that's okay. So I wasn't alert, and I didn't have my weapons, so I wasn't ready to hit nobody. Well, for some reason, one linebacker followed me. <laughs> and he realized that he messed up too, so he was going to hit somebody. Well, I had my alert gone, and I didn't have no weapons on, and the play was going that way, so I was walking around like this. And I got hit so hard that I had to go out for a couple of plays. Because I didn't have my alert down. Do you know the enemy will do the same to us? <clears throat> when you don't have your weapon, when, you don't, when you're not alert, Listen, you better be ready because when you don't think that the devil's going to show up, he's going to show up. He's going to show up. You better be ready. Have your word. Have your weapon. Be alert. Be ready for what God is com coming. Be ready for what God is going to do. Because church, when we don't allow it, when we're not alert, when we're not ready for the devil, then he's going to come at us and he's going to take us down every single time. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is powerful doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. You see, when we are fighting for one another, then we have to be, we have to have the word. We must be the word. And we must allow the word to take over our lives. But there's one more thing we must do. And I love this. The last thing Nehemiah told him to do is when the trumpet blows, be ready. When the trumpet blows, be ready. You see, they were all alert and they're all there, but when the trumpet blows, guess what they did? They showed up for one another. Amen. Not just one person, not just the family that was in the low place, but everybody showed up for one another. They heard the trumpet, they heard the mighty sound. And they begin to fight with each other. And the Bible says that you know what happens? They build the wall. They build the wall in record time. Because they can't stop and they won't stop. And they realize that a community was worth saving. That people were worth saving. Do you realize that your family is worth saving? Do you realize that Williamston, Belton, Shedder, Honeypad, Fountain Inn, Greenland, Anderson is worth saving? Columbia, I know we have something in Columbia. It's worth saving. It's worth saving. Church, do you realize we've got to fight because nobody else will? 
Nobody else will. <coughs> Last week we said we got to keep marching. Got to keep marching. Got to keep moving. One more time. If we have to do it one more time, every time we go around, we have to tell ourselves one more time we're going to keep marching. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep going. But you know what? As we march, we better start picking up people to march with us. Amen. We better start fighting for those that we're marching around. Amen. I love it. Some of you have been thrown to the curb. Some of you nobody even wants to talk to anymore. But praise be to God, somebody picked you up and brought you to Restoration Chapel. Amen. And you might have just showed up, amen, but now you're part of the family, so you better just start marching yourself, because we done added you, amen. You're part of the family. I don't care where you're from. If you go to another church, you're part of our family also, amen. Right. We're going to keep marching, amen. I don't care what's going on in your life, because I'm fighting for you, amen. I will, I'm praying for every single one of you. When I leave this building, we pray. We pray for you at night. Me and my wife, we, we can't even have a date night without talking about y'all, amen. Y'all are part of our date night, amen. We, we love every single one of you to the point that our children know who you are, amen. But I, Elijah will go to daycare and say, oh, so-and-so sick. And they say, well, who is that? Well, that's, they go to my church. They go to Rest Chap, amen. He lets them know because, listen, we, we realize when the trumpet blows, we're going to be marching and we're going to grab a hold of everybody that we can and we're going to fight for every single one of you. And I pray and I know and I know that God's moving in your life because I know you fight for every single other person that's around you. But the thing is, we're going to fight for those that even don't want us fighting for. We're going to fight for those that, that are atheists. What? We're going to fight for those that are part of ISIS. What? We're going to fight for those that are Baptists. Some of you are like, what the word? <laughs> it's funny. You say ISIS and atheists, and they, they say, yeah. And you say Baptists, and they're like, what? <laughs> We're going to fight for those that non-denominational. Non We're going to fight for those at the, at the McDonald's that, that just told us off, amen. We're going to fight for those that cut us off when we came to church, amen. We're going to fight for those that ride Harleys, amen. We're going to fight for those that, that are down at the bar getting drunk, amen. We're going to fight for the prostitutes that don't know what's going on, amen. We're going to fight for the children that don't have nothing to eat, and we're going to fight for the children that have everything to eat, amen. We're going to fight for the small rotten ones, we're going to fight for the ones that don't even know uh, what they have, amen. But praise be to God, we are going to fight for people because God has called us to restore a generation and a community to the knowledge and works of God. And the way to do that is by being Jesus-centered, spirit-led, and community-minded. And we ain't going to stop, and we can't stop, and we won't stop, amen. Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight for your family? It's family day. Amen. Are you going to fight for your family? Because listen, I've learned if you can't fight for the people that's closest to you, you can't fight for those that are not. Some of you want to go out and save the world, but you haven't even talked to your family about Jesus. Fight for the ones that's closest to you first. And then go out. that we sung, said, our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God, amen, I, I wish that could just be our cry, our God, amen, no matter what we go through, our God, amen, I'm going to fight for our God, I'm going to move for our God, I'm going to praise for our God, I'm going to reach the city for our God. I'm going to reach the world for our God. I'm going to reach my family for our God. I'm going to reach my kids for our God. Amen. <coughs> God is greater than I ever can be. I'm going to keep marching. <coughs> if you will, everybody stand.